Hello, welcome to another video. We are, well, we're over halfway through the year by the time you're watching this, but I feel like in my head, July is safely into the over halfway part of the year because obviously June marks the end of the sixth month. So all of my videos kind of summarizing that half of the year seem to be going up in July. So here we are. This is gonna be a look over the books that I have rated five stars in the first half of the year. Obviously this is all kind of basing this on a January to June type of thing because I'm filming this in July, you're seeing it live in July, but I don't know in between the time that I'm filming this versus when you're watching it, if I would have had another five star reader between that. So we are counting this right from the start of July slash the end of June. If I get any other five star reads in between, I will pop them into my five star reads for the latter part of the year. But there's not actually, I'm looking at them down there, as many as I would have expected. I think I've been a bit harsher, or not necessarily harsher, but I haven't dished out the five stars as easily within my rating systems. At the moment I'm using Corepile, which is created by G from Book Roast. If you search that on YouTube, you'll understand what it is. But that is how I'm using my rating system. It helps you work out what the star ratings are for books. It's really, really good because it breaks it down into all different attributes of the book. So without further ado, let me tell you which books I gave five out of five stars of the year so far. So the first ones I'm gonna group up because it is the last three in the Heartstop series. That seems weird saying it's the last three. There's four out at the moment. The first one is not included in this, but the first, the second, the three, the books two, three, and four from me have all received five stars by Alice Osman. These are graphic novels that follow the love story of Nick and Charlie as we see them throughout their school time together. We experience their friendships, their relationships, their experiences coming out, their family relationships as well. It's such a fantastic series. Alice Osman has such a good way of creating important messages, but also creating so many different characters. So there is often someone for everyone to be able to relate to. I really love that about her writing. I think it just makes her such a beautiful writer to read from because there's always so many different perspectives and so many different things you can take from her books. And these series were no different. I absolutely loved these. I think my favorite might have been the fourth one, which was the most recent released one that came out this year. But I did really enjoy the third one because we see them go on a school trip to France and they go to Paris and I really enjoyed reading about that and seeing Alice Osman's drawings to accompany that as well. I think that was really good fun but all of them are fantastic but it's no surprise to me that these keep coming out as five stars because I think they're very easily a favourite series of mine just for so many reasons but I just really really adore them. Then we have another little graphic novel slash comic style book. This is Book Love by Debbie Tung. So this is much more in a sketch kind of style like there's little comic stories and sketches on each page and there's a different type of scenario on each page as well so it's not like a fiction story book it's just short little comic strips but I absolutely loved this it was so cute and it was a very very fast read but I would say this is a good coffee table or bathroom book because it's one it's very easy to dive in and out of but also I love the relatableness in this there's so many little sketches where I'm like it's me it's me and it's just cute to be able to see the way that Debbie Tong has illustrated this and just made it so damn relatable as to what it's like to be a reader because they're spot on with everything they've put in this it just every page I'm like yep I do that I do that and I do that so it's just a really cute fun time if you're looking for something that is just really light and easy maybe you're in a reading slump and you just want something to kind of break it up a little bit and just put something fun in between then I would definitely recommend this one. I've been rereading a couple of books this year which is kind of unusual for me because I've got so many books on my shelves that I haven't read yet. I don't often want to dwell on rereads but because we had a new addition to this series this year I wanted to reread the Akatar series. Now the first two did not hit the five star rating for me but the last one A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Maas did. This is the third and the conclusion to this trilogy. I know that Nesta's story in A Court of Silver Flames is a continuation of the series and it isn't just a trilogy anymore but it feels like we're getting the roundup of Feyre and Rhysand's story in this book even though we do get more of them from Nesta's perspective but from Feyre's journey this book is like the end of that kind of chapter that we've seen. This one is always my favourite of the three. I don't often see this one getting as much praise, but there is a massive epic battle scene in this one. And you see so many heroic big moments and so many sacrifice moments and so many cheering moments that I love it. I absolutely love anything that is an epic yes kind of feel to it. And this book is littered with those. So I think for me, that is why this one is definitely a five star read and I think will remain a five star read. I don't know if I'll ever reread this series again. Now I have read it twice over, 
but it's still a fun time. It's not like it's a literary great or anything. I think we know from Sarah J Mass books now that they can be a little bit smutty, they can be a little bit extra, but they're just fun YA adventure books. Actually, not YA. Are these ones YA? This series isn't YA, is it? The Akatar series. Oh, I feel like it's always a thin line, like sometimes it's in the YA section, sometimes it's in the adult. I'm actually unsure as to what age genre this is, so we're just going to put a question mark over that, but they're fun books. <laughs> I'm really glad that I realised that this book was actually in 2021 because I for some reason thought it was at the end of 2020. That is Wonderland by Juno Dawson. So I read this right at the start of the year in January, which is why I think I kind of think I read it in December last year. But this book is so good. It's an Alice in Wonderland retelling, except Alice is going to a party that is called Wonderland and she is going in search of her friend Bunny, who she thinks is in some kind of trouble. So we see her kind of edge her way into this party that she's not really meant to be going to. We see all the characters from Alice in Wonderland personified in these people at the party and the different roles that they have. And on the side of everything, this is a great Alice in Wonderland retelling, but the main things going throughout this are so many important themes. This talks about gender, it talks about sexuality, it talks about consent, it talks about drug use. There is so much in this that whenever I recommend it, I'm just praising it for how much Juno Dawson has added into this within such a short amount of pages. I think this is just above 300 pages, if that. No, it's actually just below. It's just below 300 pages. But honestly, the world that Juno Dawson crammed into this and the way that they're summarising Wonderland in a modern day situation, making all these characters relevant, and it's just so clever, so clever. So I absolutely loved this, and this has made me instantly want to read more by Juno Dawson. And it was a very clear five out of five stars for me because I just devoured it. And I think it had been a while since I'd read anything within a kind of Alice in Wonderland mindset and I was very very glad to jump back in with this kind of a retelling of very classic story that is told in a very different way here. <laughs> I'm going in an absolutely random order I realise, maybe I should have got an order read but here we are. My next five star read was All Our Hidden Gifts by Caroline O'Donoghue. I get confused with what the genre for this is because it is a contemporary but it also does have elements of fantasy to it. It follows a girl who has found a tarot deck and she decides to learn how to read the tarot cards. It all comes very naturally to her like it was kind of meant to be and she ends up kind of cursing her ex-best friend who ends up going missing after a dodgy tarot reading that she gives her and this is all about her trying to like find out what's happened to her friend, what's going on. She makes some new friends and forms relationships and it's just an interesting look at a different type of a magic system I suppose than contemporary because it's very much based around the tarot readings. This definitely gives off serious witchy vibes, there is a shop that I would absolutely love to go to in this that sells all sorts of cool witchy things. I think if you're into that kind of a vibe and you enjoy reading those kind of books then you would definitely be into this book. I think something like The Spell Book of Lost and Found by Moira Fowley Doyle is something that I would say is a similar line to this maybe in the way that the magic system kind of works. Something else I think this book was really interesting for was not only did it show you a book with LGBTQA plus characters but it also showed you hate groups and people that were literally going out of their way to abuse people within the LGBT community and I think I've not really often read books where there are these hate groups so whilst that may add a tone that makes it heavier and gives us all these other things to discuss. I think it's really important that that is raised because it is a problem. And this book does highlight that that is a huge thing that's still happening and how it affects people. So I think not only was it a fun fantasy contemporary thing with witchy vibes, but it also has these really important messages to it as well. Then no surprise to see The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner on here. If you've been watching any of my videos this year, you'll know this is one of my favorite books of the year. It is a historical and contemporary fiction merged together. We follow somebody in the present day that is investigating into this apothecary that they seem to be reading about from the 18th century. And then we also follow two characters who were working in that apothecary in the 18th century. And what that apothecary does is sells women ailments and kind of potions to be able to kill men in their lives that are doing them wrong. So it's a feminist, save yourself kind of story with a very dark twist to it but I really enjoy the fact that this has a mystery to it and we are seeing that mystery unravel both in the present day but also in the past. 
I liked the fact that we have a main character in the present day who isn't really happy with her life and she's just kind of been complacent and hasn't really realised what she actually wants out of life and she's going and grabbing that for herself and it's all about her being empowered and not needing other people and the decisions that she makes to further her life and push herself through to have a much more positive life and enjoy the life that she's living and for me that overriding theme for this was just so strong and I think that's probably in the end why I gave it five stars. I loved all the other aspects, I loved the mystery and I loved the crossover between contemporary and historical fiction but ultimately I loved how strong this was for our main female lead and how we saw her develop in a way that I think we often don't necessarily see from female heroines, we often see some sort of a different resolution for them obviously without giving spoilers but I liked the route this took a lot. It felt different, it felt refreshed and new and I'm definitely going to read more by Sarah Penner if she ever writes anything more because I think this was, I'm pretty sure this was her debut. Yeah this is her debut book so I really do hope she writes more. Then we have Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. This is a novel set within the Caraval world but it follows Jax who is a character we meet within the Caraval trilogy. So this is a spin-off series and it's so damn good. I was sent this as an early review copy, it comes out in September, I cannot wait for everyone else to read it. Oh my gosh, I love the Caraval world anyway. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll know that the first book in that series really lifted me out of a dark time and I will always be thankful for it for that reason. And this book honestly gave me that escapism again and when days are starting to feel the same and you know, the world is a very strange place, this book offered me some kind of fantastical escape to somewhere that was very, very different and I absolutely loved it. We're following a whole new female lead here, but obviously we're seeing Jax from the previous books, but we're seeing Evangeline Fox as she goes from a situation that she isn't really loving being in to kind of being a lot more in control of what she's doing, sort of, and working her way into a situation that is a much greater overall sense of direction for her. <laughs> it's really hard to describe this without spoiling it because also I don't want to tell you anything about the world that we leave in Finale from the Caraval trilogy as well but honestly if you enjoyed Caraval you will love this and I will say as well that I've, I've seen people are saying that you can read this without reading the Caraval trilogy and whilst in essence it would make sense if you would read it without reading the Caraval tr trilogy you will see spoilers for the Caraval trilogy ending in this book so if you're never ever going to read the Caraval trilogy which you really should read the Caraval trilogy because it's fantastic but if you're never going to read that trilogy for whatever reason then yes you could read this and it would be fine but if you still want to read that trilogy and you also want to read this then you need to read the Caraval trilogy first otherwise you'll definitely see spoilers but this is so good it's very very worth catching up with the Caraval trilogy to be able to read this in September if that's where you're thinking you might be at but so good easy five stars definitely a new favourite book for me. And lastly we have got Bridge of Souls by Victoria Schwab. This is the third in, is it called the City of Ghosts trilogy series? It's, I think it's more than a trilogy hopefully. But this follows Cassidy Blake who is a young girl who had a near-death experience and ever since then has been able to walk between the realms of the living and the realms of the dead and interact with ghosts and kind of help to move them on. Her best friend is a ghost and she has another friend who can also do the same kind of thing as her and this follows her journey this time in New New Orleans as she follows her parents along this ghost hunting film production thing that they're making. They are both on a TV show in which one of them is a skeptic and one of them is a believer and they go to haunted places and learn stories about them so you can imagine it's an interesting time for Cassidy when she can actually see what all these people are telling her parents about and she can interact with these ghosts. So this one is set in New Orleans which is honestly a location I am becoming really really interested in learning more about. I think reading this and reading Mina and the Undead got me really excited to read more about New Orleans because it's a setting that I've kind of seen before in American Horror Story the Coven series but other than that I haven't really heard too much of it and now I'm really really interested so this book definitely helped spark a flame there for me. I just love Victoria Schwab's writing, but I love, I love, love, love this series. It is a middle grade. Cassidy is, I think she's like 11 or 12, something like that. She's such a great character. I love her friendship with her best friend, Jacob. Is he called Jacob? I'm pretty sure he's called Jacob. Yes, he is. And I love where she goes in this journey. It's so good, very well deserved, five stars. So those are my five star reads so far up until the end of June of the year. I say up until the end of June, but I did finish Once Upon a Broken Heart like right at the start of July, so I kind of cheated at my own rule, but it's okay. Up until the day of filming this video, which is the 9th of July, 
those are all my five star reads. We'll see if I have any more to add in. I feel like I'm gonna have to post this video really soon because otherwise this is all gonna change. But this is my five star reads for the first part of the year. I hope you did enjoy this video. Please do give it a thumbs up if you did. It really, really helps out my channel. Comment down below what your five star reads have been or if you've got any five star predictions coming up, I'd be interested to know what they are too. And you can subscribe to see more of my face on your feed. I also do have a Patreon link down below. If you like what I do and you would like any more content from me, there is a lot more there. There's podcasts, there's dedicated reading vlogs, it's a fun time. It's all linked down below. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep smiling and stay positive.